Captain, I'm uncomfortable piloting this Vorgon ship so close to the heart of our fleet. It's necessary to test fleet defenses and detection capabilities. Over-reliance on compliance and procedures can breed a false sense of security. The Vorgons are constantly trying new evasion and infiltration techniques. The only way to know for sure if our defense in depth blockades and sensor networks work is to test them. But why do the test right in the heart of our defense network? Fleet Command wants an inside-out assessment of our most strategic capital ship wings. We are going to simulate a breakthrough in Vorgon penetration techniques, as well as the Vorgons working with fleet personnel who are double agents. Look, we are coming up upon the GTA Loki and her sensor blind spot. Crew, commence operation. Assume breach. Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and today I'm going to discuss how assuming that your network is breached can actually lead to a more comprehensive assessment of your entire security status. Now, when I got started doing pen testing in the mid-90s, it was a once-a-year pen test was sort of state-of-the-art. You used to write up your reports, and you would tell your customer that, hey, you know, you should get a security policy to kind of make sure you know, you don't let people go to places they're not supposed to go to. Now, today in 2024, completely different world. We have multiple security policy frameworks that have multiple different ways of, of putting controls on your system. We have real-time continuous vulnerability detection, and we want to merge those things together in, with the ability to have threats that are coming into our network inform both of those processes. We've got blue teams and red teams. Blue teams do defense. Red teams do offense, and I'm wearing purple day to talk about how these guys can work together. Now, the problem that I see right now in 2024, it really comes down to this notion of complexity. With vulnerabilities, you might have a vulnerability management program. You could try to patch everything, but even if you did, you still have zero days. And even if you did, you still have the ability to have a, a, a malicious employee on there trying to go to places they aren't supposed to, to go to. I'm not saying, obviously, as the guy who co-founded Tenable, I'm not going to say not to do vulnerability management. It helps, but it's part of the puzzle. On the other hand, you have these control frameworks out there. Now, uh, these control frameworks, like the payment card industry, you got CMMC, CMMC, you got the NIST cybersecurity framework, you've got so many different, you got the MITRE attack framework, right? Each of these frameworks is broken up to different types of controls. Center for Internet Security is another one, where these controls are basically blocks where you can either perform a detecting function or a preventing function. A password is a control requiring passwords to have a person who's logging into a system, uh, you know, do some sort of authentication is a type of control. Two factor is a stronger control. Now, these controls become very, very overlapping. And uh, I'm going to go into this a bit further, but a, a really interesting discussion is the difference between network access and network authorization, right? I might have access to the web server from a network point of view, but I don't have a password to log on because I'm not authorized to do that. In a perfect world, all of these controls would have uniformed access and authorization for everybody on the network, and we would be just preventing and preventing and preventing. But the reality is because of complexity, we have this gray space where we're gonna audit and, and log and, and report sometimes, and in other times we're actually going to you know prevent and try to enforce that. Now, recording this in uh, June of 2024, there's another really big thing going on. We're under attack right now by uh, people who are trying to bypass our controls, and it's the AIs. What's basically going on right now is that all of the past 20 years of role-based access control and zero trust networking and just trying to make sure the right people can go to the right things with the least privileges, that's all being stripped away at these large organizations because people are seeing a lot of value in hooking up artificial intelligence systems to all of these kind of back-end systems. And once you do that, you're kind of bypassing all of that access control and you're inventing a new set of problems. I've done other videos in the past where it's almost like you're going to need an AI to audit and interpret the results of the AIs that hooked into your entire organization. It's also going to make it a lot easier for adversaries who have uh, you know implants on your network right now to basically do what they need to do just by doing queries to the local AI. 
they are not going to have to transfer petabytes of data if they can just talk to your local AI and exfiltrate the results of that query, you know, over DNS or that sort of thing. So what are we to do? Well, what are we to do is we are to assume breach and we are to assume breach from the point of vantages on our network where we can test it to see if the controls that we have in place actually do anything. So there's a couple different things that are going on in this, uh, this field right now. Now, Gartner recently came out with something called the Continuous Threat and Exposure Management uh, Framework, where they actually try to put CTAM in the middle of your GRC, your business controls, and, and your threats. And this is good. I like this. I kind of like to think that we were doing this at Tenable a long time ago. And I, I also like to think that a lot of CISOs I know have been using things like the MITRE ATT&CK framework to like inform their controls because not everybody has 100% coverage on everything out there. But what this really manifests itself is that as a red team, you can drop uh, implants and you can actually test what's going on in the network in a couple different ways. Now, at Gula Tech Adventures, we've invested in breach and attack simulation companies in the, in the past. The, the, the leading one in the market right now is a company called Scythe. So I'm on the board there, full disclosure. Scythe is a great tool where you can literally come in and it's almost like a, 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 a command and control attack tool designed to test the controls and the efficacy of your detection systems, whether it's uh, an endpoint tool or even a, uh, a SIM, a SOAR, or even a network intrusion prevention system. So Scythe allows you to do a lot of that, that kind of stuff. We're gonna, I'm gonna be showing Scythe in some of the examples right here. The, the point of these tools though, is that you don't want your red team people to have to sit there and develop the tools. If you're, if you're trying to emulate China or Russia, or you heard about the Volt Typhoon, or you heard about Dark Side, whatever that is, you you know you might want to go and 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 uh, download some tools from the internet and and the real map. Let's see how well that works for you, right? So there's the concept of having a commercial breach and attack simulation tool where your red team can talk to your blue team in a safe and a benign manner, simulating very unsafe and unbenign things, is the whole point of uh, of uh, of this market. So. It's really interesting uh, being involved in Scythe because one of the reasons I wanted to invest in it is because at Tenable, even though we did a lot of vulnerability discovery, you know, counting vulnerabilities, and we really tried. If you haven't seen the the you know the Uber Tenable products that are out there, you can do a wide variety of real time controls validation with them. Most organizations who approach approach vuln management don't have the mindset that a control or a lack of control is a vulnerability. So a lot of times I, I, I often see Tenable ended up just dumping vulnerabilities into some other process that does that. I wanted to invest in Scythe because we had the ability to really test security from a completely different point of view. Basically, drop some implants on the network, do some things and see if they are detected or prevented. And you can do a lot of different things with that from a, from a certain point of view. All right, so, um, so think about control testing from a couple very, very simple examples. Let's start with a basic example of a computer A talking to computer B. And computer B has a vulnerability, and computer A has client vulns. So does computer A, is it is it at risk? And of course it's at risk, right? If computer B is uh, vulnerable, and it could get some malware, it could get an attacker, or something like that, the client side of those conversations is always something that I like to point out. And I got two computers here, A and B, but in a large organization, imagine B is the PeopleSoft server or the domain uh, you know, admin controller, so, something where everybody talks to it as a client, perhaps for authenticating or perhaps for just some sort of access control. If those clients can then be compromised, I've always considered clients that talk to servers kind of an extension of, of the server. And being able to kind of show those kind of attacks, especially when, if you look at your history of CVEs, we've had a lot of vulnerabilities that are client-side face. We have vulnerabilities in QuickTime and VLC, SSH clients. We've had, of course, vulnerabilities in web browsers all the time, right? So it's pretty easy to exploit clients. And it's, this is something that gets very, very overlooked. Now, when it comes to controls validation, a lot of times people just say, well, let's just put some breach and attack simulation people out there, drop it in and see if we're detected. But being very precise and saying, look, I have an administrator who has a client. I have a client being used to commit code. Those, those clients are things that can be targeted 
And this is the type of scenario where you could deploy a breach and attack simulation uh, program like Scythe to then see if you have the controls in place to detect those kind of things. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about gets a little bit more complex. The difference between network access and authorization. So right now, if you have a very, very large network, modern network, you probably have firewalls, routers with access controllers, web gateways. You might even have a NAC. You might have a VPN. You might have a stealth overlay network. If, if you're from the NSA or you know, you've seen things like Project Texas on TikTok, there's guards, right? One-way guards that are designed to allow network traffic a certain way. You might even have bastion hosts. And of course, we have zero trust networking. Trying to model all of this to see which parts of the network have access to other parts is insanely complex. And hackers don't care about your intent or your protocols. You know, I used to have a version of SSH that ran over ICMP. So uh, the attacker is not limited to, you know, doing things by the, by the rules, right? There's a lot of, you look at the, the toolkits uh, that the NSA uh, used that, uh, you know, Edward Snowden disclosed, you know, there were ethernet tunnels that uh, computers could talk to each other that, that way. So network access control and understanding who can go to who is really, really difficult. Now, overlay on that all the different ways you can authorize to get into something, right? You might have a domain authorization, you might have a PKI, you might have an SSH key, you might have a password, right? You might, have a, you might even have the ability to go into privilege account management and understand what your rights are. Now at Gula Tech Adventures, we're pitched a lot of different technologies. And there's a lot of great technology that audit just those things. You got Bloodhound you know, looking at uh, Windows domain credentials, that sort of thing. Uh, we have Sandfly Security, which looks for malware on Linux uh, over SSH, but it's got something called SSH Hunter. Because if all I need to get onto a computer is a certain SSH key, well, maybe I can steal that kind of stuff. But now you marry those two things together, all the different ways we can have access, all the different ways we can have authorization. And now I got some gaps. How do you test that? Well, you could do pen testing. You could also drop a breach and attack simulation. You can drop a site then plant at one end of those things, those pipes and those authorizations, and you can try to do things and see what is detected and what is not detected. And what I've often found is modeling is great, modeling are useful, but doing an actual test is, is finally you know, something what you need to do to understand if you've got that kind of exposure. Now, the last scenario you can do with these breach and attack simulations is just, you know, all the different scenarios that you hear about, right? So, you know, are you, do you want to simulate that there's a backdoor in code that's being updated that you download? I, I, you know, I patched uh, VLC in the, my open source uh, video, uh, video uh, playing software. Is there a backdoor in that? Well, how do I test that? Let's, let's, let's drop an implant. Um, maybe the vendor comes in and plugs in unauthorized. Well, let, let's test that. What about a hostile employee? What about an employee doing, using a BYOD uh, laptop? You know, do they have the ability to break in and do those kind of things? So all of those kind of typical uh, scenarios you hear about from pen testers in the war stories, you can simulate all sorts of stuff like that with a breach and attack uh, simulation, such as Scythe. All right, so then where do you start? One of the times, a lot of times when I pitch Scythe, when I pitch breach and attack simulation, when I pitch, you know, how do you go beyond patching and, 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 and controls? You know, I'll have some CISOs who basically will say, look, you know, I'm too busy, right? The red teams are, are causing me too much work. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Well, that's true. And you might be in a life cycle where you are not ready to do something like this. It, you might just want to do it and just see how well you're detected. Maybe you just want to test your MDR, that sort of thing. But Gartner actually, what, as part of their CTAM here, Gartner actually says that if you are moving to do this type of, of, of uh, testing, you're in an optimized type of category. And when you think about this, you really want to be optimized. I mean, you're going up against China. You're going up against Ru Russia. You don't have an unlimited budget. Any single point of failure can, can land you as the CISO in perhaps you know hot water from the SEC, perhaps in the news, perhaps out of a job. You also don't want to spend all that all that money. So you want to have an optimized and balanced account of what's going on there. So if you're going to do this, what do you do? Well, you can't test everything. You can't put an implant on all your network and test the whole whole thing. You got to start with your core. What are your most critical assets? What are the assets that you would, would be a bad day if somebody got? What are the assets that should be the easiest to verify that you've got the proper controls in place to find malicious activity? That's where I would start. Start with your most critical assets. Now, those assets can be people, 
people with critical access, your executives, your administrators, that sort of thing. They can also be things like the servers, the DNS servers, the domain controllers, the the uh, the database servers, the uh, the bastion hosts, things that could be very, very easy for somebody to manipulate data and leapfrog into your network if they had access to. So that's a lot of different ways to, to look at using breach and attack simulation to understand and better empower the security of your network. I'm going to leave you with one more analogy. Now, I got started in this industry because I was a failed pilot, right? I got my pilot's license. I went to flight school and Flight school didn't work out for me for the air, with, the, with the Air Force, but, but I'm here and it's fine. But I learned a lot of things about airplanes during that time. I learned that there's multiple ways for them to detect the altitude, their direction, their speed. And because when you're flying along and you, know, you have something freeze up or you know, it doesn't, doesn't work, you have a failure, you, don't wanna, you, know, you can't land if you can't navigate, right? It's the same thing with networks, right? Your network, the security of your network, it's so complex and it's so difficult to QA that in real time. You can't just simply say, we're getting alerts and there's a lot going on in my SOC, therefore things might be working. You have to be precise. You have to have another way to kind of QA in real time what is on your network. Because again, the threat is getting worse, right? We've got Russia and China. We've got people hooking AI to everything. It's gonna be a lot easier for somebody to steal a lot of damaging data without a lot of activity. How do you test for that? You've got to do breach and attack simulation. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about Scythe, you can go to their website, which is listed here. And of course, if you want to see more cool videos like this, give us a like and give us a subscribe. I hope everybody has a great day. I'm Ron Gula.